video, you learn how to create better solos on guitar using triads. Triads are great for seriously expanding your chord playing. However, they are equally as good for expanding your soloing on the instrument. Hi, this is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net and in this lesson, I'll walk you through three approaches to creating great solos using the triad chord shapes on guitar. You will learn the difference between fretting triad shapes on the guitar for playing rhythm parts and visualizing the shapes for lead guitar playing. So let's get into it. Okay, so using triad shapes for soloing. So triad shapes are chords essentially, and um, they're often, you know, you learn them as, as shapes and, and you learn to create rhythm parts with them typically. However, we can also use our triad shapes for soloing. That's what the focus of, of this lesson is. Now, if you're new to triad shapes and you wanna get a little bit bit of background on triads, then check the link in the top right hand corner of the video. And there's a couple of videos there that will um, explain triads and give you a foundation for them. You don't have to watch those videos first before digging into what we're doing today, but definitely check them out all the same because they'll give you a good foundation for triad shapes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a C blues, a blues in C. Okay, so just our C, um, F sharp, F sharp, F7 and G7 chords, right? That's going to be the backdrop that we're going to be applying this, this to. So the first thing is, if you see um, or have seen my previous triad videos, you'll see that I introduce this concept of playing triads by shape or playing triads by position. So I'm not going to go into great detail here about that because that's in those videos linked in the top right corner of this video. Um, but basically we can play um, well, we can outline a chord progression with triads using a single shape. So if I was to do that over a C blues, I could take what we would call a 4-3-2, because the notes of the triad fall on the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings, so we call it a 4-3-2 voicing. And if I place that in the 8th position, I'm playing a C root position triad. And that would cover my C7 chord, okay, in our blues. The next chord change is F7, so we go down using the same shape, so by shape, and play an F. And then when the five chord comes up in our G, in our C blues, it's the G chord of course, we simply use the same shape again, but now we play a G at the third position. This is the easiest way to start using triads, because you only have to think of one shape. However, as you can see, you've got to navigate your way around the fretboard a little bit as a result, and that's fine, okay? So the first approach with soloing here, I'm gonna use by shape, then I'll show you what by position is about. The thing that I want you to do here is we're, we're playing, we're thinking soloing. So what's soloing? Typically single notes, right? So we don't wanna hold the shape. Now, if I'm using this triad shape for a rhythm, guitar part, strumming, whatever, I'm gonna hold the shape, or I'm gonna fret it, hold it down. However, here we wanna visualize the shape, but not hold all fingers down at once. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is we want to be able to access the notes of the, of the triad, but in a singular fashion. So no point am I holding both fingers down. Now, of course, we can do that if we want that sound or we want to sound a double stop or something like that. But for the purpose of what we're doing here, we don't want to hold the shapes down. We want to just play the notes singularly. So once you've done with a note in the triad, then release, relax the finger while you go to the next note. So notes won't ring out over the top of each other. Again, if that's the sound you want, go for it. It's a good sound. But for the purpose of our video here, we're not gonna do that. That's why I mean visualize the shape. You've got to see the shape on the fretboard to then be able to access those notes one at a time, whether it's over the C or the F or, or the G, okay? Now, this is the, the crux of the first approach here. It's going to be very limiting because I'm giving you three notes to use here, okay? So we build on this, as you will see. However, the triad itself can be very cool, okay? And can give you a nice, simple sound that then you can build on. And we will do that today, okay? So I'm going to play you an example of this being done over the C blues in one moment. But basically, you just create little lines. So you might go... Okay. 
sort of I'm putting some slides in there just for some nice phrasing. Um, but you know, don't overdo the phrasing at this point. It's just really creating little simple lines. You know, it goes to the F chord in the blues. So you're down here. You've got to follow the chord change. Can't stay in C because it's very specific to C. If the chord is F, you've got to move with the chord change. And you would come down here and play some other, you know, some line there before coming back to C. And eventually you get your five chord and your four to your one okay so very very simple but the first step is to just target those notes know where they are by isolating them which we get to do with the triad and don't hold a triad shape down on the fretboard don't fret the shape visualize it so then you can access the notes so I'm going to play you something just now show you an example of that concept being played over one chorus of a 12 bar blues in C so have a listen Okay, cool. So there you go. There's very simple, but very effective and something that you can then build on. Okay, we don't want to try and throw everything at once over one chorus of the blues. And this gets you finding those key tones, the chord tones of the, the major chord here that is in the dominant chord that you're hearing behind in the backing. In fact, I think I was just using major chords in the backing there. But anyway, beside the point. Now, by position, so that was by shape, right? We're using one shape, but of course we're moving up and down the fretboard. By position means that we do the same thing, but we stick around the same position of the fretboard, the same area. So we're not having to move so much. Now, that means you've got to access more than one triad shape. So I could start here with my C root position. Next chord is F. What is the closest F triad? Well, it's this guy here. The, what we call the second inversion F triad. Don't worry if you don't understand that, just know that there is an F triad, 4-3-2 voicing right there, right with the C. In fact, they both have the C note in them. So nice, smooth change. So now instead of sort of maybe going and down to F and back to C, you know, that sort of thing. Now that I'm here, I can get a little bit of a smoother result. Okay, right there. In fact, you can move from the E in the C one fret up to the F in the F triad and you get a very smooth connection there. So again, we're still just accessing these notes in a singular fashion, visualizing the shapes as opposed to forming them in our hands and fretting them like if we were playing rhythm parts. But the idea is that yes, you can, you can get a smoother transition from one to the next, not such big interval leaps. That sounds fine, but it sounds really cool if you can keep it all together as well. When it comes up to the G, the closest G triad there, 4-3-2 voicing, is this guy. First inversion G triad there. Notice how, again, there's common notes shared with the C and the G. So, And, and the other notes that aren't common only move by a fret or two. So you're going to get very nice close voicing with the, the voices, the notes in the triad. So when you're coming from the C and into the G, to very the F and back to C and G. That's sort of like the last four bars of the blues there. So you can notice, hopefully, like you know, the last four bars of the blues with our G, two, three, four, our F, two, three, four, our C, three, and four, and G. And when I play the triads, you can hear the harmony being outlined. No chords there, but you can hear the harmony being outlined because I'm playing only chord tones. As long as I'm playing the right triad for the right chord, of course. Okay, so the difference with this approach is we stick it all around one area and get a bit of a smoother result. Nothing wrong with moving positions and getting large interval jumps. That's variety too. But if you're limited because you can't do anything else, then it'll sound like that. Okay, so here's an example, C blues using this approach where we stick the triads more into one area of the fretboard.
Okay, so that's the first approach using triads to solo with. There was two examples there, but it was the one approach, which was just limiting yourself to the notes of the triad when you're on it. Okay, but one was by shape and one was by position. The second approach adds the element of um, side slipping, if you like, or chromaticism. Uh, basically, what you can do, the, the idea here is that you can approach any of the notes in the triad a fret below or a fret above. Okay, to get a bit of a smoother, more interesting sound, basically. So instead of, you know, being limited to this sort of thing, we can... Okay, so what I'm doing there is, basically you got like the, the root note of the triad. You can step down one half step, as long as you resolve back into it. It's all about resolving. Okay, if you don't resolve, it'll sound wrong. But if you resolve back into a note of the triad, it will sound good. So if I was just applying that in a real systematic way to that triad shape here, you know, there's a root note. And you can approach it half step below or half step above. Here's the third of the triad. Or the fifth. And you can get... You can even approach from... You know, a couple of frets below. Okay, there's all sorts of ways that you can kind of pull it, you know, ascending up chromatically down, and, and it's all about resolving and getting your ear in with it and, and learning approaches. There's lots of common things here. It's not, again, as random as what it might look. Um, but the key is knowing the triad shape. I'm visualizing that shape the whole time. I'm not losing sight of that, so then I can move around it. So if I'm on the F, cheated there I added a note from the that's the flat seven but anyway I didn't really mean that however hopefully you get the idea the side slipping chromatic approach half step below half step above it really pulls your ear in and out of the harmony and adds interest and smoothness to the line kind of kind of like little stepping stones in a sense kind of little stepping stones to the to the note to the triad if that makes sense otherwise forget what I just said there <laughs> um, okay so here is an example C blues again using I think I use those triad shapes um, have a listen so you can hear this side slipping effect when added to our triads soloing over a C blues <laughs> Okay, so the third approach is adding scale tones. So a triad is three notes coming out of the scale. And if we're talking about major triads, as we are here, it's the first, the third, the fifth. So you've got the second, the fourth, and the sixth, and the seventh in the scale, diatonic to the key that you're in, available to you. Um, this is not the side slipping so much. As when you do the side slipping approach, you may happen, it may happen to be a scale tone. Most times it's probably not. Um, but here it's strictly scale tones added to the triad. So here's the triad of C, which we're getting to know. Now, if I play notes from the scale around that triad, okay. So now I'm not going to, it's a, way past the scope of this lesson to go into modes and stuff, but I'm playing C mixolydian there, okay, because it's a C7 chord, the fifth chord of F. You could think of it as just playing the notes of F major. Let's not go down that road here. I'm going to have videos on that, but just know the basic concept, scale tones. Now, if you just learnt the scale all as one big block, you might not see the triad in the in the scale because you've learned the triad first or you learn the triad you can then see the triad separate triad separate to the scale even though it's in the scale okay and that allows you to then again visualize on the fretboard and add okay and get much more variety much more scope with with your lines but always knowing where those chord tones are 
when you're on the F, same thing. Back to the C. And when you're on the G, same sort of thing. So we've got our G. Okay, and that is... Okay, the, the G Mixolydian scale there. So the basic idea is adding scale tones. And as you can see, you can hear you know, more variety in the lines, greater depth, more, you know, more melodic really. But notice we've started from the basic triad shape, which in and of itself is great. Then we've added some chromaticism in there, the side slipping, and this approach here, number three, is all about scale tones to extend the harmony again. And of course you can, um, add, you can mix all those together and you know whatever right I'm just trying to put in a bit of chromaticism there with the scale tones etc um, and you get all these very cool lines okay so you can do this in any sort of style you want it doesn't have to be blues it doesn't have to be acoustic I'm just using my thumb here um, typically I probably use a pick but I like the tone of the thumb too so keeping it simple but um, you can do this with any style this is not conducive to a particular style of music it's just typ uh, typical basic fundamental concepts in regards to soloing period so have a listen to the scale tone method or approach using the triad shapes over our C blues so that you can get an idea of how that sounds <laughs> If you like this video then you'll love this ebook audio from my jazz concepts for acoustic guitar series titled arpeggios in this ebook you will learn exactly what arpeggios are how to visualize them on the fretboard and several ways to use them in your guitar playing i will run you through three key major arpeggio shapes and three key minor arpeggio shapes and how each of these relate to each other on the fretboard so you can easily access them in your playing. Not only will you learn the conventional way of applying arpeggios to your guitar playing, but I will also show you how to instantly multiply your soloing possibilities with each arpeggio shape through arpeggio superimposition. This sounds complicated, but it's super simple. I will not only show you how all this stuff works on the fretboard, but also explain it to you so you can understand the theory behind it all. So click the link in the description below this video and download your free ebook audio, Jazz Concepts for Acoustic Guitar Arpeggios. You'll have it in your inbox within minutes. Let me know in the comments section what acoustic guitar topics you would like to see covered in future videos. I read every comment and I would love to hear your suggestions. If you like this video then hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and of course hit that notification bell button so YouTube can tell you when I've released a new video. This is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net as always, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.